Ever wanted to make your own Procreate brushes? Maybe you'd just like to know how to customize your favorites. Well, in this tutorial, we'll take a look at the many options Procreate has for creating and customizing brushes. There's a lot to see, so let's dig right in. First, make sure to note your brush size. It's located right here. I can move the slider to make my brush bigger or smaller, and we can adjust those maximums in our brush settings. We'll take a look at that a little later. The bottom slider here is our brush opacity. Again, move this slider to adjust it. We can change the color up here in the upper right hand corner. It's as easy as touching to select a color. Now let's take a look at some of the default brushes. Open them up by clicking on the brush icon right here. These categories over on the left are called brush sets. You can rearrange brushes within a set by tapping and dragging it. The same goes for brushes themselves. I can tap and drag wherever I prefer in this list. I can duplicate a brush by swiping left and then selecting duplicate. This is handy if you want to create a variant of one of your favorite brushes. You can also create custom brush sets. Swipe downwards in the brush set area to reveal this blue plus sign. Tap it to create one. We can also delete custom sets. Just tap to reveal the options here, like deleting and renaming. Now let's dig into customizing our brushes. Let's begin by tapping on a brush we'd like to customize. Any will do. This opens up our brush settings, and there's a lot to see here. That said, if you ever customize one of the defaults and you want to reset the brush, just come down here to About This Brush. Then tap on Reset All Settings. It's as easy as that. I'd also like to draw your attention up here to the top of the brush settings where we have our drawing pad. This is a great place to test out brushes that you're customizing. You can also adjust the drawing pad here in the drawing pad settings. We can clear the drawing pad, reset all settings, change the preview size, and the color of the test brush too. Now let's check out the stroke path settings. Spacing refers to the space between each shape that makes up the brush stroke. Think of it like this. Your brush is a repeated series of shapes, just typically close together. Check it out. When I increase the spacing, we can see the shape more visibly. Streamline is your line stabilization, so if I turn it up, my line will be extra smoothed out for me. Jitter is kind of a different sort of spacing in this scenario. Notice if I adjust the jitter, there's a randomization to where the shapes that make up the stroke appear. Fall off affects the length of your stroke. Next are our taper settings. We have pressure taper and touch taper. The pressure taper settings apply when using an Apple Pencil, where the touch taper settings apply to drawing with your finger. Check it out. As an example, I'll adjust the start of my touch taper and adjust the size. Now I'll just draw a line with my finger instead of a pencil. Cool, right? Note that this isn't real touch sensitivity with my hand, but rather I'm assigning attributes to be applied when using touch. The shape settings concern the shape that makes up your brush. We can change that shape here in the shape source, but we'll do that a little later in the tutorial. Scatter is a lot like how it sounds. We can add some variation here or keep the shape uniformed. Rotation rotates the direction of the brush shape. Count will adjust the number of shapes, whereas count jitter adds some variation to that number. Then we have the grain, which is sort of like another major building block of your brush. We can change the grain source right here. Think of it like a texture. We have moving and texturized tabs here to choose from. Think of it like choosing between if you'd like the texture to be kind of smeared and integrated into the brush for moving, or a more repeated pattern for texturized. Movement here determines how the grain behaves. Check it out. At full or rolling, there's a lot of continued texture here, but when I turn it down, it's more smeared. Scale and zoom will impact the size of your grain within the brush stroke. Check it out. I typically leave my rotation here at static, but you could rotate the grain here if you'd like to. The depth settings here dictate how visible the grain is. I'll turn my grain off, and then I'll set it back to max. The offset jitter here can help keep things looking natural and organic unless you'd prefer a more consistent pattern. 
Your blend mode, brightness, and contrast should all be familiar if you've ever used layer blending modes. It's how our brush grain blends, essentially. Check out some of the options. Next, we have our rendering options. Light glaze, uniformed glaze, intense glaze, heavy glaze, uniform blending, and intense blending. I recommend using the drawing pad above to check out the difference here in real time. Some of the differences here are subtle, while others are more stark, and different brushes may call for different rendering. The flow here is how much comes out when using your brush. Wet edges will soften the edges of your brush. Burnt edges will darken the edges of your brush, and we can further alter this below with our edges blending mode. Wet mix is another one that's rather how it sounds. Dilution is how much digital water is in your brush, and charge is how much paint has been digitally loaded onto your brush. Try out a brush with high dilution and low charge, for example. Then we have pull, which is how much paint is pulled within your stroke. Next, let's take a look at color dynamics. The stamp color jitter affects the color of each instance of the shape within your brush stroke, whereas the stroke color jitter will add color variation every time you make a stroke. Color pressure will change the color depending how much pressure is applied to your pencil, and color tilt will change the color based on your pencil's tilt. We can adjust the hue, saturation, brightness, and intensity of the second color for each of these. For example, check this out. I'm going to change the stamp color jitter's hue, and then change my example brush in the drawing pad to red. Now here's how my brush looks. Cool, right? Dynamics are generally independent of the pencil. So for example, speed settings will be dependent on the speed in which a line is drawn. Then think of jitter down here as sort of a randomizer as it wouldn't be impacted by pressure or by speed. Then we have our Apple Pencil settings. These may not be fully available to you if you're using a third-party pencil. The settings are separated into pressure and tilt. Pressure would be how hard you push down, and the tilt would be the tilt of the pencil. Finally, we have our properties. We can adjust things like our brush's preview and orientation, but I'd like to draw your attention to the brush behaviors down below. These are important because they'll be applied out in our active work area. So for example, I can set the brush's minimum opacity to a specific value, and then these behaviors will be active out in those sliders in the main area that we looked at earlier. So that was a lot of settings. I know it's a lot to look at, but the best way to learn them is to just dig in and give them a try. However, let's walk through creating a brush together. It's easy, I promise. First, back out in our main drawing area, let's create a new brush by clicking on the plus sign. So here's our new untitled brush. Let's start off in the shape settings and assign a shape source. Tap on import and then source library. This brings up a whole bunch of choices that are already bundled with Procreate. I'm going to browse through this list and then choose flower. Okay, just tap on it and then tap done. Now let's check out the stroke path. I'm going to add some spacing here. Notice how it really changes the appearance of the brush. Remember, you can test out your work in the drawing pad while you're editing these values. So let's go to shape again. I'm going to change the rotation. Let's turn it all the way up so it follows the stroke. Now we have a chain of flowers that follow in a more uniformed way. But okay, let's say we want to take this in a whole different direction. If you'd like to save what we've created, remember, we can make a duplicate. Let's do that real quick. I'm going to give our brush a name in the About This Brush section. You can also list your name and a signature with your brush. Okay, let's tap Done to save it. And now, looking at our brushes, swipe left and tap Duplicate. Okay, great. Now let's tap to edit one of our duplicate brushes. Let's go to Grain and add a grain source. Tap Import and then Source Library again. This time, I'm going to search the source library for what I want, Oil Pastel. Select it and tap Done. Notice how it's changed my brush's appearance up in the drawing pad. 
Now let's change those stroke path settings. I want my spacing to be none. Now we have one continuous looking line again. Let's head to the shape settings and let's put the scatter all the way up. Notice how it mixes up the flower shape. I also want to change some things under rendering. I'm going to use uniform blending and set my flow to 50%. Feel free to test this brush out. Notice how it's looking a lot more like a fuzzy pipe cleaner now. So check it out. We've made two very different brushes pretty easily using the same shape. Here's an example of two quick little doodles with each brush. Cool, right? I hope this video inspired you to try out making and customizing brushes of your own. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. Thanks so much for watching, and happy drawing!